This week, I'm very happy to welcome back to the show the host of NHL on TNT, and now my friend, Liam McHugh. Liam, what's going on? It's uh, great to talk to you, man. It's uh, good to be introduced as a friend, and I'm getting used to being introduced uh, as the NHL on TNT, so yeah. it, it sounds good. Definitely has a nice ring to it, and and first off, let me just say, you know, since you came on, I think this summer, this past summer, it's been, you know, so much more fun, like, watching you on TV now that I, you know, kind of know you and know your personality, and I could, you know, kind of feel the vibe behind your tweets, too, which is which is nice. No, I appreciate it, man. It, it, it's been kind of a liberating experience to you mm. know, get to show, showcase personality a little bit more. Uh, I just go out there and have fun. I mean, uh, I love what we used to do at uh, NBC. It was a little bit more news-oriented, though. And uh, this feels like, hey, you got a group of guys watching the game. Uh, this is the group you'd like to sit at a bar with, sit on the couch with. And uh, I'm hoping we just keep that rolling. Yeah, it seems like you kind of have, uh, you know, a newfound love for the game. I don't know if that's like a genuine thing or do you, do you feel that way? I mean, it looks like it, you know, on TV at least. Yeah, I mean, I think in some ways, yeah, I, I have a little bit more energy just doing the job, I think. And, and mm -hmm. part of that is... Uh, Part of that is that, like, you know, new kid in school uh, energy that you get, you know, where everyone's trying to feel things out and everything's different and everything's great. Uh, but part of that just is the, I think, the Turner vibe, which is, yeah. you know, if you're having fun there, the people at home are going to be having fun too. And it's genuine. You know, it's a lot more conversational. We get to dig into topics a little bit more. It's not as fast paced where it's just like hit this, hit this, hit this, and then move on. Um, so I am enjoying a lot more. Plus, you know, while I love covering a variety of sports and I did get to do that at NBC, it's been nice to focus. It, mm. it really has been nice to just be able to focus on hockey. Uh, I used to spend my falls, you know, running from uh, stadium to stadium during the NFL season and then trying to get hockey in there as well. This has been great where, uh, you know, now I'm on a text chain with the guys I work with, which mm. is bizarre because I'm on a text yeah. chain with Wayne Gretzky. And like, he's hit me up midweek about things that he's seen from, uh, you know, from around the league, things going on in his life and everyone's back and forth. And it feels more like, uh, like a bunch of guys, you know, a little bit more of a locker room atmosphere laid back. And then we get in the studio and we have a lot of fun. So this mm -hmm. has been a tremendous move for me. Did Hank get added to that group chat yet or no? Because I know he's making his debut tonight. He has, he has not been added to the group chat. <laughs> not yet. Uh, I suspect that uh, by this time tomorrow, uh, he'll be on there. Uh, I've been uh, I've been back and forth with him. He's been great. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I couldn't be more excited to have this guy on. You know, I think it's cool to have, obviously, a legendary Ranger, a guy who's going to be a future Hall of Famer, but also just getting a goalie on. Uh, you know, we have that demo area. I want to get yep. him in there. I want these guys. Listen, we've had him in the demo. The guys can't hit the net, so he's going to have to lose <laughs> yeah. time. Uh, but I just, I want to get a different perspective and there's nothing like having, let's just be honest, one of the coolest, most stylish athletes, you know, that I've ever seen and just mm -hmm. getting a very, uh, a different, different train of thought from him going forward. Do you have a relationship with him, you know, prior to this, have you like ever interviewed him or just like kind of chatted with him before? You know, I, I haven't, it's been weird. I mean, we spoke over, uh, we spoke a few days ago over the phone and, you know, it's bizarre. He's got such, you know, this very recognizable voice yeah. and as uh, do you, but you know, yeah, well, it's funny. Cause like I've been watching him for years and then you realize you're like, Oh, this guy's been watching our show. And like, mm -hmm. you feel in some ways, like, you know, each other. Yeah. Uh, so there's some sort of instant comfort. I remember a few years ago, I, uh, it was probably like five years ago. I met Patrick Kane. But I've been talking about Patrick Kane for, you know, six years on national TV prior to that. Mm -hmm. And he walked in and it was weird. Like we were in the middle of a conversation as if like we did know each other. So there there is a comfort level. Uh, it's not that way with everyone, but it, it has been that way so far with Hank. And uh, it, it's it's strange, but uh, I'm not going to question it and I'm going to keep it going. And, uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to he knows Biz. So he's going to be out with Biz. He doesn't really know Rick Tockett. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I'm always interested in see how the chemistry goes, but, uh, you know, we'll see. I guess it's kind of a funny thing to talk about too. Like, I don't know, it just like kind of clicked in my head, but you know, when I'm in my social circle and I know someone knows me and they know, I know them, I still like walk up and like introduce myself. Do you kind of feel the same way? Like, did you walk up to Patrick Kane and be like, Hey, I'm Liam. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. Like, you get, like halfway there, you're like kind of like, hey, nice to me. And he's like, yeah, he, he sort of made it yeah. easy. Uh, but I'm still, well, to that point, I'm still texting uh, Henrik uh, uh -huh. and saying at the end, like, you know, dash Liam, <laughs> just in case like I haven't made it into his contact list yeah. yet. Um, <laughs> yeah. So he either doesn't have me in his contact list and appreciates that, 
or mm-hmm. thinks I'm like a 70 year old man texting who yeah. has to leave his name at the end of it at the end. And he's just like, all right, this guy's old and doesn't know how to use technology. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm hoping that we, we will, you know, take the next level in our relationship and I will mm-hmm. no longer have to put my name in those texts. You're like the Jokic brothers when they joined Twitter. I don't know if you saw that story. Nikola, <laughs> Nikola Jokic uh, you, in the NBA. Yeah. Yeah, I I, uh, I could use a team like that on my, my social media department. So, yeah. Yeah. His brothers made a Twitter to like chirp the Mark Marcus Morris and uh, his brother, <laughs> and every tweet they would send out, they would dash Jokic brothers. Jokic but brothers, their, but their account was Jokic brothers. It's right there on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm that guy essentially now in, uh-huh. in our text relationship. Yeah. That's that's so funny, and I know it's uh it's a game day for you. We're recording on Thanksgiving Eve. This probably won't come out till Monday. Um, you know, what do you kind of do? Anything differently to prepare for TNT as opposed to what you were doing for NBC? Uh, yeah, I think we do. I'll look for things, especially like Henrik. Uh, he's coming on the show. He's different uh, to the show. He's new, and I want him to be instantly comfortable. Um, mm. And for us, I think getting someone comfortable means like just throwing something at them and seeing how they react. So I spent the last few days just like scouring the internet for like strange, funny, odd Henrik Lundqvist things. You uh-huh. know. Uh, like I, I probably have a very bizarre like search history right now, <laughs> but like, uh, and I'm, you know, my wife's like, what, why are you on YouTube? Just looking for like bizarre. And I'm like, just trust me. I was like, this is a real job. They pay me. I, mm-hmm. I, I have to do this. Uh, so there's that, uh, this is a different week though. I mean, cause you know, usually it's our game and then maybe there's one or two other games on a Wednesday night. Yeah. Uh, this is crazy. This is 14 games on a Wednesday night, night before Thanksgiving. So mm-hmm. it's a little bit less prep and a little bit more like, let's see what happens and then react. Um, and I think there's always that big conversation that people have right around Thanksgiving, which is who's in, who's out at this time, because we're you're just about between 20, 25% of the season. And it, you know, since 2000, it's been a fairly accurate indicator of teams that are going to make the playoffs. Obviously it's not hundred percent. I think it's like 75 to 77%. If you're in now, there's a good chance that you're going to make the playoffs. Uh, I just like the idea of, at the end of this, I want the guys to find one team that's in that they know is not going to be in. I want them to find one team that's out that they know in their heart is going to be in the playoffs. Um, Because to me, that's a big conversation that we can keep going throughout the next few months. So it's a different level of prep for this one. Uh, It's been a lot more Austin Matthews based because we again, and I love the idea that the night before Thanksgiving, we get to put the best young American player on TV. Um, yeah, I think this guy along with McDavid, it, you know, this is the Crosby Ovechkin face of the league going mm-hmm. forward, really, for the next 10 years. So uh, I'm, I'm excited that we got it. Do they have a Thanksgiving meal prep for you guys on set tonight? I feel like that's kind of be a thing. They better. Uh, <laughs> I would assume so. they take good, they take really good care of us. Uh-huh. But, you know, that's fine because I'm, I'm really worried about like what I eat uh, when I go on air because Fair enough. Uh, obviously like. Like I don't do well with all types of sushi. So like I'm okay. watching the guys devour it. I'm like, you know, I think I'll take that gamble at home. Maybe uh-huh. not like five minutes before I go on national TV. Uh, you know, someone brings in a huge bunch of barbecue. It looks fantastic. I don't really need a nap, you know, an hour later uh, mm-hmm. while I'm trying to get ready to go on TV. So I don't know if turkey and tryptophan is really what I'm looking for before I go on air. Uh-huh. Uh, but I'm sure they have something for us. I mean, listen, you know, these are still former professional athletes. They're going to get pampered. They're going to get taken care of. And I just ride their coattails and get whatever scraps they leave over. Uh Speaking of food, I I didn't really, you know, have this question intended. I'm a big (laughs) NBA fan, big Knicks fan. And, uh, you know, obviously the story last year, I guess, you know, almost two years ago in the NBA bubble was Lou Williams and and the Magic City Wings in in Atlanta. (laughs) You had the wings yet? I have not. I have not. I, you know, I don't know if I'm like the uh, the lame adult in the group that maybe like doesn't get asked out after the show. <laughs> like, we'll see you next week growing up. Uh-huh. You put the show together. We'll be the guys who have fun. But uh, I don't know what the guys do after shows. Uh, I haven't heard anything about the wings, but I definitely haven't been invited either. So uh, not yet. I'm mm-hmm. I'm a middle aged guy from the suburbs and I'm extraordinarily boring. Yeah, I don't know. You see, you definitely aren't that boring. I, you got to give yourself some credit. Well, thank you. I'm going to use that as probably my new Twitter bio. You're definitely not. That <laughs> You're boring. definitely not that boring. Yeah, I could have I could have worded that way better for sure. <laughs> um, I actually I want to run a content idea by you for TNT. All right. So I, I like I said, I'm a big basketball fan. I loved when you guys had Charles on. I thought that was awesome. 
Um, how kind of funny would it be, maybe like an April Fool's thing, if you guys had the NBA, you know, on TNT crew call a hockey game and you guys call an NBA game? How do you think that would go over? I'd love it. Uh, I, I would. Uh, I would pay to watch the NBA guys uh-huh. do the NHL, um, and I, I'd love to see how much Charles dominates that and doesn't allow anyone else to speak um, because. He, he will sit there and say, I watch all these games. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was nothing better than Charles saying that during the NBA playoffs a few years ago that someone said, oh, you're not even watching the game. He goes, no, no, I'm watching the NHL game. It's a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I do, I would love to hear our hockey guys talk basketball because mm-hmm. uh, I think for a few of them, I, I just want to see how badly they butcher basic terminology. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I remember doing the Olympics uh, in Rio a few years ago and I was, uh, teamed up with Rebecca Lowe, who does all the Premier League coverage at uh, NBC. She was fin- finishing her shift. I was beginning. And, you know, we're talking about what's coming up and there's basketball. And she said, well, I really hope you enjoy the match out there today. <laughs> and I said, that's the best. That yeah. is, uh, And I feel like it would be a lot like that. Uh, so it would be, you know, the difference is for the play-by-play guys, we have Kenny Albert. Mm-hmm. So Kenny's the, yeah, he's no the best of everything. What's like, Kenny, yeah. it's like any sport, any day, any time, any state, it doesn't make a difference. Kenny will be there and he will crush it. Mm-hmm. Uh, for everyone else, it, it could be quite an interesting journey. But uh, hey, listen, if I pitch it and it happens, uh, I'm going to cut you in. So, yeah. I just imagine, <laughs> like, you know, uh, I, I, I guess I think of Biz like right away. I imagine, like, you know, a point guard in the NBA trying to get the ball in, into the post, like a big man, and, and Biz saying, like, get, get the ball in deep, you know, like something like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I like the fact that, like, you could have the NBA guys in our demo area. Yeah. And I just want Shaq in goal. Yeah. That's it. I uh-huh. want to see what Shaq in goal looks like. And, you know, it, is there any room at all to shoot that puck? Well, Shaq's getting into hockey. I, I went to UBS for the home opener. I didn't get to try the uh, the big chicken because um, everyone that's where everyone was. Like that was the big draw at uh, the Islanders opening night. Everyone wanted to try Shaq's or Shaq Shaq's chicken sandwich. I said Shaq. Um, you know, he, he was a big hit, or I guess that was a big hit. I'm going actually tonight. I don't know if you had a chance to see UBS yet, or if you're going to be in attendance anytime soon. I I haven't gone yet. Uh, I'm definitely planning on going pretty soon. Um, you know, definitely in the next month. Uh, I, I'm excited to get there. A lot of friends of mine have gone. Uh, they loved it. You know, they, they uh, it's state of the art. It's everything that's advertised. It's, it's beautiful. It feels like home too, which is, you know, always a, a difficult thing when you're going from sort of, uh, we all know the Nassau Coliseum yeah. wasn't like state of the art arena, but it was home, you know, mm-hmm. and it was loud. And to have that run that you had at the very end of it, where, you know, you almost reached the Stanley cup final and it was such a magical moment. Uh, to play in those playoff series, to beat the Bruins, to play, you know, seven game series against Tampa Bay Lightning. This felt like home to people. And I, uh, I don't want to hear about traffic. I don't want to hear about parking issues. Like this is New York. Yeah. It's Long Island. There's yeah. going to be traffic. There's going to be parking issues. It's just the way it goes. Uh, the problem right now isn't the arena. The problem right now is, you know, are the Islanders going to win games yeah. and are they going to be healthy? And are they, you know, going to get past, COVID going to get past injuries and get back in a division where the Rangers are doing very well. And everyone else is playing about where you'd think they'd be playing mm-hmm. except for the Islanders. That's, that's a unbelievably stout division and to fall behind like the Islanders have, I don't know if you can call your way back out of this. Even the devils too. The devils are playing great. Yeah. Devils blue jackets. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And that, that, that only complicates things. There's no, mm-hmm. like, it's not like last year where, like, you find the teams at the bottom of your division, you pick on them. Uh, it, it's just not there. Uh, but I don't know. Did you, uh, did you enjoy I mean, you're, listen, you're a spoiled Rangers fan who's gotten yeah. to go to the Garden for uh, his whole uh, life and his whole fandom. What mm-hmm. did you think? What do you think of UBS? I would compare it to, like, maybe a transition period from, like, a New Yorker moving to Florida where, like, it kind of felt like a vacation. You know, it didn't really seem, okay. like, an, didn't seem like an Islander's home because it's, it's really, like – so it's so incredible. Like it really is. Yeah. I, honestly, like I got there at like five o'clock and tried to see everything and I couldn't even get to everything. Like that's how big and, and cool it really is. It was just like one big party. Um, You know, it, it was awesome. It didn't stink like beer and cigarettes. Like, no, definitely not. At the end of the Coliseum. Yeah. And, but unlike Florida, there were a lot of people. Yeah. And, and you didn't that, miss an entire period trying to take a piss, which was nice. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I saw that they had some sort of like coordinated flush to make sure all that- <laughs> yeah all the toilets worked properly. Uh, it, it, you know, that alone, when I took my boys to the Coliseum, like that was the one I warned them about language. Uh, I was like, you're going to hear words you've never heard before. And then I warned them like, Hey, listen, 
we got to go to the bathroom now. Uh-huh. I said, and just be careful with your water intake because this is <laughs> going to be a process here. Uh, but yeah, no, that, that's, that's a nice relief. Yeah, no, definitely. And I guess speaking of your boys, they've been able to watch on TV at all. Cause I know, I know Biz did drop an asshole once. He did. He sure did. Uh, <laughs> and I, that was the night before Veterans Day. So it was like the one time that my kids got to stay up. Oh, God. Uh, and watch like the pregame show. So my wife sent the text during the show. She was like, well, thanks for that. Thanks for uh, huh. you know, bringing them on. Uh, she goes, <laughs> all right, we got to change town. We got to go now. Well, what, what do you say? And that's like, well, they weren't interested before. Now it's like all they're interested. Like, what do you say? I missed it. What do you say? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Biz is a role model to my children and mm-hmm. uh, teaching them many things that they didn't know before. But they're watching and they're into it. You know, uh, I just think they're at that age right now where it's like you watch five minutes of sports and what you want to do is go out and then play that sport. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have the time to keep watching. Sorry, one second. I just got to take my boss to text me. I just, hey, I listen, you got to do what you got to do. It's- Any chance. Sorry. That's like the worst feeling ever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, all right. Let me, let, me oh, just, let me just get my focus back. Are you okay? Yeah. No, I'm fine. I was just I was supposed to like send a Zoom link. I just it's fine. I said I was like walking my dog. <laughs> um, there you go. Yeah. Nice. The things we well, do. Let's right? all be on there. So yeah. No, I'm gonna cut this out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'll I'll transition right now though. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I, I want to go into uh, overtime because I know you're a big advocate for the three on three overtime. You're always tweeting when overtime's yeah. happening. Do you want the shootout to be taken out of the game, or are you a fan of it still? I know we had that sick Rangers Devils shootout a couple weeks ago, which was awesome. But I don't know. There's nothing better than that three on three overtime. There's nothing better than that. Um, I, I'm I'm not a fan of the shootout. The funny thing is, like I, I tweeted it out uh, a few weeks ago, and like the shootout that followed uh, in one of the games I tweeted out about was actually excellent. Um, and but it's it it, it it often is so anticlimactic, mm-hmm. um, and. I have a few problems though with three and three overtime. I obviously have a problem with the idea that you can take a penalty late in it. Um, and basically there's no repercussion. Yeah. Um, I, I have an issue with that. So the idea of like extending it when there's a penalty to me, there has to be, I, I want to find something to be able to be able to rectify that situation. The problem of course is like, could you just keep extending it? by people mm. continuing to take penalties. And I get that there's a never ending cycle there. But to me, there has to be a way to fix that. Uh, three on three is to me riveting, but it's also non-specific to hockey fans riveting. Like you can have people who don't, who just like sports, but don't love hockey, turn on three and three overtime and can fall in love with it. Mm. I don't know that the shootout does that. I don't think it does that at all. Yeah. So I love, I love it. I'd love to see more of it. I'd love to see a whole lot less of the shootout. Uh, and I love that. You know, I also like the teams are going for it. Cause there's, there was this phase here with three on three overtime where it's like, maybe if you're not that good at it, you can hold the puck and skate it around and you can make it boring. I'm not seeing that as much this year. Mm-hmm. And I, I I'm glad because if you're coaching the fun out of three on three overtime, I don't want you coaching my team. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hey, like I, I want, I want to win. I want to be entertained. Are you familiar with lacrosse rules at all? Uh, a little bit. My kids are starting to play, but uh, Long Island the, boys, they better. Yeah. So, well, they're, yeah, yeah. They, well, we, we live in a town where it's like, you're given a stick once you uh, get the zip code. Mm. So garden city, yeah. right? I am garden yeah. city. So you like, they're obligated by law at this point to play lacrosse. But uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's a different way to end that game, right. With like the, the one on one. Yeah. 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 Uh, I kind of like that too. It, it's, it's cool. It's fun. Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I, I'm right now. Like, I don't think there's any reason to change something that works so well. Yeah. To me, it's just give me a little bit more of it. Um, and I don't think that's asking too much. Three on three is fantastic. I think if you ask Keith Jones, he'd tell you go to the shootout. And then he'd tell you, like, after two overtimes in uh, the playoffs, go to a shootout, too, because Ooh. it's getting late and we're getting tired. And, that's fair. Uh, but I think that's like three, you know, he's like three rounds into doing triple overtime games. And he's like, ah, uh, just, you know. But I will say this, like, uh, they told me they're going to like start doing some, uh, you're fine. Tests <laughs> I, I don't know if I have to evacuate the building, sure. but I think I'm all right. Yeah, we're we doing the annual testing of the fire alarm system. It will be only a test. I repeat, we are doing the annual testing. Of Apparently the I'm system. safe. It's just Day the, in the life of, uh, you know, yes. NHL on TNT. Go. Yeah. Got to stay safe at all times. You're looking live. So, yeah. Um, that's funny though. I was like, 
you know, I've been to like a lot of hockey tournaments, you know, in my day where they were, did like five minutes of five on five, then like four minutes of four on four, three minutes of three on three, two minutes, two on one, you know, two on two, one minute, one on one. And that'd be kind of cool. I kind of like that. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I really do. I, I, to me, I don't know. It's interesting for the fans. It gets a little bit more intense as you go. And I just love the open ice. And I love, I mean, listen, I go back to that Rangers uh, Leafs game and it was just, wild so and up and down and i mean there was nothing better than that it was the best mm-hmm. few minutes of sports i've seen this entire fall so let's embrace that the winning goal was so like anticlimactic too with the panarin it shot was. it was such a weak one it was a muffin yeah yeah it was, well considering all the saves that were made throughout yeah. that by both goalies like it, it was odd that that one stuck through but uh but the yeah but nothing topped it was it was pure adrenaline i mean mm-hmm. why would you not want that Yeah. No, I guess let's talk Rangers for a little bit too. Do you think they can sustain this incredible start they've had? I I think it's going to be difficult just because I think there are teams that are going to play a little bit better. Yeah. Um, uh, The Islanders hopefully should be one of those teams that plays better. They're built to play better. Um, And maybe some of the older guys on the team are playing their way into shape. I don't know. I mean, COVID certainly didn't help that for a lot of them. Um, I would suspect that Pittsburgh is going to be a little bit better going forward too. Malkin's mm-hmm. starting to skate. Uh, he looks like he's on his way back. You get Malkin, you get Crosby, you get Crosby playing a little bit better. It, it's not going to be easy, but I, I think the Rangers feel like a playoff team. Uh, I, I really do. Uh, you can't get off to this how to start. I don't see them imploding. I think they are a playoff team. And a big part of it is they get, here we go. <laughs> Maybe the best young defenseman in the league alongside Cal McCarr. I have your attention. I have your attention. We are testing the fire alarm system. I repeat, we are this testing the fire alarm system. This is how you get yeah. the ratings. Right? What are you we're trying attention. to pregame nap? What do you do? The fire alarm system. Uh, that's a great question. Yeah, they're going to wake you up. I, I, we need uh, we need to figure out a fire drill situation. Yeah. TNT going forward. Uh, so I don't know, man. Um, but no, I, I think the Rangers, I think they're a playoff team. I don't think they continue at this rate but i think they get in i could see them being you know third in the division be a wild card team and i i really like their goaltending Mm. so you know why not why not at this point get in make a run and uh and as we've talked about in the past like if you can get in and get in the playoffs and at that moment sabanajad is hot yeah because when he's hot he goes on a tear Mm -hmm. who knows maybe you make Mm -hmm. a deep run no, I completely agree. Actually, speaking of playoffs, too, are there going to be more TNT broadcasts during the playoffs? Is that something that's been talked about yet? I don't really know. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, we're, we're in a split with ESPN, yeah. and uh, but we'll have we'll be on obviously a lot more than we are now. In fact, in the huh. spring, we're going to be on board as well. Like we're going to add games on the weekends. We're going to do more double headers on Wednesdays rather than just a late game, and then that's going to ramp up at the end of the season. So you know, we'll hit that March April a little bit different this year because of the Olympic break, but we'll hit mm-hmm. that stretch run a little bit stronger. And then when we're in the playoffs. We'll be doing uh, yeah, a lot more broadcasts, a lot more games, and I'll get a lot more used to being in Atlanta. So. Yeah, definitely going to be a lot of fun hearing you guys talk about uh, you know an over- playoff overtime game in between periods. That'd be really cool. That's something I look forward to. Yeah, no, it, it should be great. I think talks to you on some great stories about this little ace. Uh, Biz will be uh, – Biz is always fantastic mm-hmm. because – the greatest thing about him is I can throw any question at him and I have no idea. <laughs> like not even remotely do I know where he's going to go with it. Uh-huh. Uh, so no, nah, I'm, I'm looking forward to these guys. This is just a little appetizer right now. So what's that Michael Scott quote? I don't know if you're a novice fan. It's like, you know, 99% of the time I start a sentence. I have no idea where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's a pretty good one for this. Uh, and, and what's great is I can see everybody's face, even when Biz is on like a single shot. And I can look mm. over Tuck and he's just got this grin on his face. Yeah. Like, I thought I knew where he was going, but my <laughs> God, where is this going to end? And are we going to, are we going to have to apologize for it in some way in a few mm. seconds? What are the commercial breaks like? It's got to be so much fun. It's, it's fantastic because like uh-huh. it, whatever dig got in at the end, right before commercial break, uh, it just continues. It continues until we're back. And the hard part for me is I, I don't really like to let them know exactly what we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. The, you know but before we go on like i think they have a framework okay. um but so but it's so awkward because like you're sitting there at the desk and everyone's just kind of looking at you and they're like so <laughs> and i'm like uh we'll talk about some hockey like, yeah. like don't worry about it. like we'll get to it you'll be fine um but yeah whatever chirp happened that chirp just escalates mm-hmm. until essentially someone starts counting me down like five four and then the language hopefully gets cleaned up and we can go on the air 
It's so funny too, because it really is just like hockey culture. Like you're saying, you kind of have like the game plan written down. Like every college coach has the practice plan, and as soon as they step on the ice, and that practice plan is like posted on the boards, immediately all the players like pretend to like stick handle by the boards and like see what we have for practice that day. In case there's like a bag skate at the end, you want to kind of conserve energy. So it's kind of funny to think about. That's that's really yeah yeah. I think if someone's got like a big line, they like Uh walk over at the right time. But uh, for me, I mean. I used to have a job where I felt like, uh, all right, keep it on the rails, keep it on the rails. Now it's like, uh, I may steer this thing off the rails myself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if the view is much better, we're going to keep it here. So I'm no, I'm no longer trying to keep it on the road, keep it on the rails. I'm basically just trying to keep it moving at yeah. this point. Just don't stop. And if we can keep moving, keep having fun, I, I don't care where, the, where it goes. Like whatever is most interesting, that's the conversation. Yeah, that's really cool. It's It's really been so fun to watch, just like genuinely as a hockey fan and you know, like I said, like having to know you now, it's, it's really a lot of fun. I feel like I'm like a part of it in a weird way. So you guys are doing, no, like, and that's kind of how I, I would say, like, to your point about like more energy and more enjoyment, with yeah. the job, I kind of feel that way. I feel a connection to the sport and to the fans and to people who work in the sport, you know, who mm-hmm. do podcasts, who do radio. I, I feel a different level of connection this year than I probably did in the past. And mm-hmm. uh, it's, be, you know, it's because I'm not doing probably 12 things at once. Um, yeah. And I, I don't know. I, I'm finding that, like I thoroughly enjoy it. It's almost been a, uh, it's a very pleasant surprise how much I'm embracing it and enjoying it. Mm-hmm. And have you like listened kind of to, you know, feedback, I guess, from fans, is there any like, like true notes you've gotten on like what to do better or what, you know, work that didn't work. I, I remember there was, it might, it might've been the first night. I think it was really awkward when I think the Capitals scored like two goals while Gretzky was talking. I don't know <laughs> yeah, if that was, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was really awkward. <laughs> it's funny. It's like, little things like that and they come back with like small notes you yeah. know uh and the nice thing is no one gets too worked up it's mm-hmm. but yeah they're, they're definitely like uh talking to the guys because two of them have never been on tv before they're mm-hmm. on the panel three of them if you include gretzky uh in terms of like you know being on a, a, a tv show like obviously biz does podcast uh and talk was coach so there are things like hey you know uh when the producer's in your ear and says like 15 seconds like like that's real. Like that's a 15 yeah. second count. Like you can finish your thought. That's cool. You shouldn't shut up. Like we can, you know, have that bleed over, but don't ask someone to tell a 15 minute story with 15 mm-hmm. seconds left. Um, like, Oh, you had that cool story. You should tell her right now. And like, that's happened a couple of times where I look at that. I'm like, I'm like, in what world are we living that you yeah. think you can get that story in now? Uh, so there's a little bit of feedback there, but I also think people like the raw energy of it. Mm-hmm. And if we can laugh at ourselves, their own mistakes, and our own hiccups that's fine and we're willing to try anything that's the cool thing about turner they're like hey we'll try something that no one else is gonna try if it fails it fails um but if it's great hey we're gonna be pretty happy we at least give it a shot yeah no 100 percent. and I, I actually have no background in tv so I, i'm kind of curious how because you know i'm used to podcasting and stuff where like nobody has like a turn to talk so there's someone in your ear saying like anson you're up biz you're up talk you're up is that kind of how it, how it goes to some extent i mean i i basically I sort of dictate the flow of the conversation. Uh-huh. Um, but I've also told the guys that, you know, don't wait for me to prompt you. Um, okay. You know, I may start the conversation and get it to one person. I said, but if you've heard something and it sparks something in your mind and you want to, or you just disagree or want to add something, I said, you shouldn't wait for me. And they don't now, which is great because mm-hmm. I want it to be organic. I want it to be a little more conversational. Um, so if there's a producer who's talking, the producer is mainly talking to me okay. um, and not to the other guys. So. And it's, it, it's a light touch because I want to hear what they're saying and I want to move things along. But for the most part, I just want to hear it. I want to react to it. And um, I want them to feel like in a way they're partially in control of what's happening out there. Mm-hmm. If there's something they, substantial they really want to talk about, they should be able to jump in, say it, and it's going to be make for a much, much better conversation rather than you speak, you speak, you speak. Everyone address the camera or mm-hmm. run some video and then move on. No, I, I want genuine spontaneity. And I think we're getting that. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's gotten better and better each week, you know, from what I've seen. And, um, you know, just to kind of wrap it up, I know we're getting close on time here. Uh, you know, I know you're kind of a big Jersey guy. Last time you came on here, we talked about, you know, home white jerseys again, maybe going back to yeah. that. But, yeah. you know, we've seen the Devils and now Team USA and, the only team that's really gotten it right lately is the Coyotes. That's like the only thing they've got going for them yeah. right now is their jerseys. So, I mean, is there like another franchise you'd like to see kind of throw it back or just overall like a more classic look in, in general for the entire NHL? 
I, I like, I, I have to say, I mean, I like a lot of the classic looks. I, I don't mind a lot of the newer, like, Olympic jerseys that we're seeing. I don't have, like, yeah. deep, strong opinions of, like, people got it horribly wrong, <laughs> yeah. which I guess is good in uh-huh. a way. Because, But to me, it also means, like, ah, uh, like, are you going for it? You know, mm-hmm. I, I would like to say, that being said, the jersey one is is hysterical. Like, yeah. I don't, like, I'm, I love that it's there just because it's great. Like, yeah. in terms of, like, someone went through and, like, either thought this was a great like inside joke or like or thought that this was just a fantastic idea Mm -hmm. um but it it very much looks like the type of jersey like if you're driving on i-95 and you stop at like one of those rest stops in jersey um like it feels like you could pick one of those up there like Mm -hmm. it's got that feel to it but whatever man it's your third jersey who cares uh I like the classic looks, uh, yeah. and I, I would say that goes for the Olympics as well. Uh, yeah. I, I really do. I like that 1980 classic look. Um, to me, that's cool. Um, and these ones, I don't mind. I, I just feel like the U.S. jersey looks like a soccer jersey. It looks yeah. like a goalie soccer jersey. And um, so to me, I don't know. Uh, I'd like to see someone take some risks because the problem is, you know, the great thing is if you take a risk, something awesome might happen. And if it doesn't happen, then we all get a good laugh at it. So, yeah. you know, go out there, take a risk. Well, that's the one thing I said, actually, on the last episode of this show, that the Devil's social media team, like, honestly, is one of the best out there. Like, you know, they always roast uh, opposing teams' fans and stuff. And then, you know, they came out with that picture of the hat that says hat on it. Yep. Uh, yeah. And that was great. I said, like, you know, if they come out with a pair of joggers that say joggers or pants on it, I'll buy the matching set. I'll get a huge jersey with the hat and the pants. That's what you want. You want like, yeah. listen, we're in on it. We're self-aware. Like we mm-hmm. didn't put this out there and realize that it wasn't, you know, that did not say Jersey on a Jersey. Uh, <laughs> no, I love that. It, it's, it's, it's cool. It's something that people are talking about. You mm-hmm. remember, and you know, what? people are going to buy it. Like people are going to buy that Jersey. Um, and I think non jersey non devils fans are going to want to buy that Jersey just because they want to have it. It's like funny. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> simply as a troll. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, so in a way, like they won because that they won simply because we're talking about it. Mm-hmm. That's true. It's a good point. I mean, you know, God knows what we'll think when they actually wear it. I'm sure that might be uh, <laughs> yeah, a tough yeah. a tough night for the devil's mentions on Twitter, but um, you know, it'll all be in good fun, I'm sure. But Liam, I want to thank you again so much, especially, you know, coming on on a game day. Um, it's gonna be fun to actually I won't be watching you tonight, I'll be at the Island Ranger game, but I'm sure I'll catch some highlights on, well, uh, on Twitter. Well, you can DVR it. You can watch it when you get home. Actually, <laughs> we're on after that game. So there you go. You oh, can, you are? Yes. We are late. We have uh, the game for Bella. So there you go. Listen, there you, you go. The best of both worlds. All right. Yeah. Listen, appreciate you having me on. Happy Thanksgiving, man. Back to you. Back to you. <laughs> Same to you. <laughs> Either way. Yeah, it works. <laughs>